Hey guys, this is my 96 Ford E350 Club Wagon, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to uh, remove all of the air intake ducting up to the throttle body, and we're gonna clean it all out. And then I got some uh, sea foam that we're gonna use to clean out the rest of the intake past the throttle body. Also, I went ahead and removed the inner uh, doghouse so we can get to the back of the engine just in case we need to. First, let's go ahead and remove this snorkel and it's just one eight millimeter. And then it just unclips and pulls out. We can go ahead and disconnect the mass airflow sensor by pushing down right here. It should pull off. There we go. We can go ahead and loosen up this eight millimeter clamp. Now we can remove the air box. Uh, there's an eight millimeter right here. And then there's two 10 millimeters up here. And the whole air box just come right off. Looks like we didn't actually have to remove those 10 millimeter uh, bolts. Uh, we, there was just another eight millimeter hiding back here. But uh, let's go ahead and just pull this whole bracket off so we can clean it. Two, two eight millimeters. and this bracket just comes off. Now we can disconnect the air intake temperature sensor and it kind of removes like the mass airflow. This is a good time to check these connectors for any corrosion because that could definitely cause problems. And then these look good. All right, so this is kind of where it gets a little difficult on the vans, but uh, there's the back of the intake hose. And we can just get, try to pull off this hose if we can. This guy that we pulled off. And next, we gotta pull off, uh, uh, it's hard to see, uh, this hose right there. That goes from the bottom of the splitter on the intake. And that is the oil fill tube it goes to. I'm gonna try some channel locks to kind of move it back and forth. All right, I got it off. It just needed a little bit of a twist before it would slide right off of there. So it may be a little bit easier if we go ahead and remove uh, this pipe and that'll give us a little bit more room to pull that whole thing out of there. And the hose clamp is on the inside. Go ahead and loosen this guy up. And now we should be able to just pull this off of here. There we go. And we'll just pull out. Yeah, it's a lot easier to take these off in pieces than trying to pull the whole thing out. All right, now we just have to uh, loosen up the hose clamps that go to the throttle body. There is not much room to work in here. We can just uh, kind of pull them off. Oh, here we go. So not hard at all. Okay, let's see if we can wiggle this guy out of here. And there we go. Now I'm just gonna take some uh, carbon choke cleaner and uh, clean out those throttle bodies. And use some lint-free disposable rags. Nice and clean. We'll get the rest of it with the sea foam. Also, once you have the intake out, be sure to check all the vacuum hoses. Check this one out. And I think it was barely hanging on until I started moving it and it just broke. So let's go ahead and replace this. Uh, it's got a little piece of uh, fuel hose. And it seems to fit just fine. And that should be okay. I don't think that'll kink. Um, I didn't feel like buying an actual 90 degree hose, but that'll be a lot better than the one that was on there. Let's go ahead and remove the mass airflow sensor carrier. So it's just four 10 millimeter nuts. Make sure to not let this drop. Be sure to pull off the gasket and screen. Next, let's go ahead and remove the air filter.
Normally you don't have to pull them out all the way because they'll kind of just sit in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we can take the cover off and the air filter. It's not terrible, but it is kind of dirty, especially if you look inside there. It's definitely a bit of dirt buildup. And the top part should be pretty darn clean. That looks good. So we know we don't have an air leak past the air filter. Gonna wanna go ahead and clean up the mass airflow and assembly. And this is just a T20 safety Torx. Ford like to make it extra complicated. And it's just two of them. And pull that out. Just be careful uh, not to break anything. And I've actually recently cleaned this mass airflow sensor and it was uh, quite dirty. But to clean it, uh, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and just take off uh, this O-ring so we don't end up expanding that thing with the cleaner. And you wanna get yourself some actual mass airflow sensor cleaner, but you don't wanna try to wipe the heated wires off at all. You just wanna spray them down with the cleaner. And then it's completely clean already. The last time there was quite a bit of junk on there. It's definitely make a huge difference in gas mileage and even performance. And then just let that air dry over on the side. And might as well go ahead and clean uh, this up as well. Spray some in there. Mainly want to get the inside, but if you want, you could clean the outside as well. So this kind of dirty around here. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this O-ring just cause it's kind of flattened out. And I got one that pretty much matches from this assortment set. And just slide this on. Make sure it's all the way down. And it can actually only be installed one way. So you don't have to worry. And install the screws. I'll just uh, kind of tighten them down evenly. And we're good. And I actually just kind of washed this up under the sink and let it dry. Real quick, let's pull out the intake temperature sensor and I believe it is just a pressure fit. Keeps going to like negative 30 on my scan tool and I checked the wiring and it seems fine. And there's no corrosion, but uh, we'll have to take care of that later. Okay, next uh, we get the hose and uh, some engine cleaner and degreaser. I got some brushes and stuff over there. And I'm just gonna clean up all the intake parts inside and out. All right, now everything is clean and dried out. And I actually just grabbed a new filter to install. But anyways, from here, I'm pretty much just gonna reinstall everything in reverse order. However, I'm going to uh, prepare the sea foam. And I got just two bottles of it here because it's such a big engine. It comes with a straw and this like little loop-de thing. And what I'm gonna do is when I install the rear hoses that go to the throttle body, I'm gonna place a hose in each one and not tighten them down fully yet. So I'm basically gonna kind of move this up so there's just a little bit left and can't really reach but install it there and then that way I can get to the rear of the hose in the back. Also guys uh, these hoses are starting to crack a little bit and you can't actually uh, get these hoses specifically for the 460 for some reason so I'm gonna have to rec recreate these but I'm gonna be pulling the intake back off later on because I gotta do a lot of engine work so I'll probably uh, rig something up then. And also just an FYI, uh, these are actually different sizes. See how that goes on there? Super loose. And then this side is actually pretty tight. Um, and you could use like maybe a little bit of glass cleaner on here um, to help kind of lubricate them to get them on if you need to. It should basically go like this, hopefully. One on each side. Okay, so I pretty much have everything together temporarily. I don't have all the clamps on, but uh, it should still run well enough to inject some sea foam. Oh, it's so hard to see. It was such a pain to get those in there. 
There's two of them, one on each throttle body assembly. And now we'll pretty much just uh, follow the instructions. First off, we're gonna just start it up and let the engine warm up. All right, it's almost warmed up here and I'm gonna need one foot and two hands to do this. And you gotta hold the throttle, throttle around 2000 RPM and I don't have an RPM gauge so I'm just gonna guess. And then I'm gonna eject both of those in at the same time. It's pretty hot right here so I'll try not to get burned. It's actually crazy how close the pistons are to the gas pedal. It's pretty cool. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and empty both of those bottles into the intake. pretty much empty uh, so let's go ahead and shut it off and it says to wait about 10 minutes and then go drive it but it might take me a little bit longer because I got to take the intake kind of back apart and put those clamps on and take the hoses out put the engine cover on and I'm gonna throw a seat in here and seat belt and then we'll go for a drive yeah check out how wet it is inside those throttle bodies all right guys, everything is back together. I have just one seat in here and uh, got the engine cover back on. Go ahead and start it back up. And we'll let it warm up for a little bit. All right, the engine's mostly warmed back up. So let's go ahead and take it for a spin around the neighborhood and see if we uh, see any smoke that comes out the back. want to get on it a bit that sea foam in there make sure everything gets cleaned out Man, it's so loud in here rocks hit the body well guys now we're all done and that's how i completely cleaned out the intake system on my 96 ford e350 with the 460 uh big block v8 but uh, anyways guys uh, i have a lot of work to do on this thing i'm probably gonna go drive it some more and i want to fill the tank completely up make sure there's no leaks and it's gonna be sitting for a while so i'm gonna put some fuel stabilizer in it and uh, uh but i have a lot of stuff to do this van i want to do a lot of engine work and i gotta paint the whole thing and then i can actually finally start on the fun part but anyways guys i hope you found this video useful there'll be a lot more van videos coming so be sure to subscribe if that's something you're interested in it and anyways guys i will catch you next time peace out